Hi, I'm Nate Capo with Bremer Prosthetics. I'm Scott Bronick with Bremer Prosthetics. I'm a certified prosthetist and I am also a below the knee amputee. And today we're gonna ask the question, can legs get wet? I hope so. Historically, the materials that are used in, in a prosthesis were used to be made out of steel, hardened steel. And that hardened steel was uh, corrosive. So exposure to water would cause those components to corrode. It would be very problematic. Even splashing, even things like that would be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, these days, most things are made out of stainless steel, titanium, or aluminum, which are all fairly resistant to corrosion. Mm -hmm. Most parts of your prosthesis will be uh, okay being exposed to water, rain, splashing, even walking across the or through a mud puddle. Mm -hmm. Um, without without a problem. Yeah, and Nate's talking about all the different variables. Sometimes when we say, can the prosthesis get wet, people have a lot of different things in mind. Some people might be thinking of just swimming and showering, but then there's a whole different spectrum where uh, depending on how sensitive to water they may be, there's a lot of different areas. Uh, you could spill a drink at the kitchen table, and if that that's something that could cause corrosion of your prosthetic limb if it was made of the steel that Nate was talking about earlier. Right. So right. Um, there's different levels, they're submersing something completely in water where something would have to be waterproof as opposed to water resistant. And we're gonna discuss those things today. So we'll start talking about at the below the knee level. Most of the feet can be exposed to water without causing mechanical problems. Um, one of the problems is that a lot of the feet have, have a sock that goes between the, the foot itself yeah. and the rubber sole. Once that gets wet, it's really hard to dry it and it may make a squeaking sound. There are things, yep. but there are problems like that, but those are easily remedied. That can, that sock can be replaced regularly mm -hmm. through exposure to the water. And that's not, not going to be a structural concern. Yep. Um, as you move up the prosthesis to the metallic components in the pylon, those are titanium or aluminum. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all going to be fine with fresh water. Everything I'm talking about to do, I want to make the caveat that I'm talking about fresh water. Yes. If, if, it, if you do expose your prosthesis to salt water or, some, or chlorine or something that you think may be corrosive, flush it with fresh water regularly and mm -hmm. that'll help maintain everything. Yes. Say you wear a pin locking type of suspension and you don't wear a suction. And we talked about, yeah, if you get water inside of the socket, it may not necessarily corrode the, uh, the pin locking mechanism or the liner itself, but just wearing a suspension sleeve like, that you might wear with a suction socket can help the water um, actually roll mm -hmm. off of your limb so it doesn't get inside of the socket. Because even though it may not damage that, it's gonna make the prosthesis a lot, a lot more difficult to move in the water because the extra weight that the water you're gonna have in the socket. And, and that's a good point. Provide. If you are using your prosthesis with a pin lock in the water regularly, you'll wanna perform regular maintenance on that lock so it doesn't seize up on yep. you so that you don't have complications with it at when, when you don't least expect it. Yep. So in the event that your liner, um, which most likely it will, you'll trap some moisture inside right. of the liner and your liner is wet, um, most of your, most insurances sh should cover or allow for you to have two gel liners a year at minimal. Um, I would argue that uh, that is the bare, very minimum. Min the bare, bare minimum. Bare minimum. Yes. Um, the manufacturer extends the warranty if you have two. So if you only have one, first ask your prosthetist if you can get a second one. Uh, because what we really recommend you do at that point, no matter how much you try to dry that liner, there's still going to be some moisture trapped in there. And when you roll that liner back on, it's going to quicken the time that you might have perspiration. It's going to add to friction inside right. of the. Once you start to get movement inside of the gel liner, you have friction things heat up. So if you have your second liner, you would want to use the one liner for swimming. When you come out, change liner, put on a dry liner. Right. I do recommend that. And then um, with the suspension sleeve, if that gets wet, the best thing to do is try to leave it uh, with the fabric exposed overnight and let it dry, just air dry. There's not really a great tip or trick for drying them. No, try to There's change. a fabric yep. on there. Yep. So continuing up the socket, the, the carbon fiber in the, the, or fiberglass that's used in the lamination of the socket, that's all uh, resistant to water. That's not, the water's not gonna damage it. it. It's all a sealed system, so it can't become waterlogged. It can't do things like that. Mm -hmm. If you have a silicone liner or a sleeve, again, those can get wet. The fabric on them can stay wet and it can be an inconvenience um, if, like, if you do, splash yourself and then put pants on over the top of it. it. It could be inconvenient, but it's not gonna mm -hmm. cause any 
any long-term right. difficulties. And if you're seeing your prosthetist regularly, like every six months or a year for maintenance checks, you can ask them to go through and just make sure if they're, you know, to look for corrosion signs. Things aren't going to catastrophically fail immediately. It's the, the corrosion process is something that would happen over a period of time. So if you're getting regular maintenance, we can go through, we can ins inspect things and just make sure that the prosthesis is holding up well. Right, and I, I'm not sure if Scott wants me to tell this, but as an, as an amputee, as his, as his prosthetist, I can tell you that he's someone who likes to swim in chlorine and in saltwater pools on a, about a daily basis. That's why I said I hope so. At the and <laughs> when we do his yearly inspection, it, he, he has a protective cover on, on his, which unfortunately also works as a barrier to trap moisture inside. Mm -hmm. So when we do inspect his uh, uh, on an annual basis, it, it typically is pretty damaged from corrosion, but yep. Scott's not a small guy and he runs on his prosthesis regularly. He's very active and he doesn't have a problem with, with breaking things mm -hmm. typically. I am typically the speaking. living example that right. if it can. <laughs> we, well, we've taken apart my feet where they have literally had almost holes right. corroded all the Correct. way through in different And the bolts. That, now the carbon fiber is all perfectly intact, but the bolts that are used to secure everything and hold them together yep. are in, they're starting pretty, to corrode. Pretty, pretty scary shape. Yeah. Pretty scary shape. Scott, yeah. don't run on that, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing is a lot of people now have electronic components that are part of their prosthesis. The majority of electronic components now are at least water resistant, yep. where it's okay to have them if they are exposed to a mud puddle or, or a rain puddle, or if they get wet from spilling a drink on them, things of that nature. Um, they do work up to being submergible for small amounts of time without causing danger, all mm -hmm. the way to waterproof. Yeah. Um, some of the microprocessor knee components specifically are, are mm -hmm. rated as waterproof. They can be submerged and used for swimming and uh, mm -hmm. you know, wading in the water, that type of thing. So these are all things that have to be considered. If you know you're gonna be in the water and you're gonna be doing water activities, you need to have a lot of communication with your prosthetist about that. The type of insurance that you have would dictate whether um, you can get an aquatic prosthetic limb that you can use for these activities, or do we have to build you one primary prosthetic limb that we can do these water activities in? And the selection of those components is going to be um, very important based on what you know what those needs are and how many prosthetic limbs you can get and what you're using the prosthesis for. Right. So, so the big take-home message with can I get my prosthesis wet is as long as you have good communication with your prosthetists and it's part of the design, absolutely. There should be no barriers to getting in the, in the water, using your prosthesis around the water. These are things that, that shouldn't be a concern for you, so go yeah. get it. Yeah, communication with the prosthetist, maintenance. I had a patient, uh, he's wearing a preparatory prosthesis. Uh, we're just getting ready to start as definitive. Where you live here in Michigan, it's June. When he called me, I think it was like the first week of June. And he's like, hey, I'm sorry to bother you. It's on a Sunday, but I have an opportunity to go kayak. And what should I do? I said, have fun. <laughs> right? right? Because it, it, I explained to him exactly what we're talking about. I know I'm going to see you later in the week. We can look things over, make sure things are dried. But there's nothing that's going to cause immediate damage or melt if, uh, the process, if you happen to fall out of the kayak and into the water. Right. And, and that's I, a, a lot of the scenarios where we get asked, hey, if I'm boating, I'm getting in and out of the boat. What if I fall in? Mm -hmm. They may not have plans to go necessarily swimming or wearing it in the shower. But we talk about this communication you're having with your process. If you know you're going to be near water and maybe not planning to go in it and a fall is something that can happen, there's no such thing as too little information. Right. I, I was just working with a, uh, someone who's a, a newer amputee and we were working on her definitive prosthesis and we were right at the end, everything was fit, everything was aligned, we were ready to finish and she looked at me and she said, I know I can't get in the water now. I, going to water parks was always my thing. That was the thing that I loved doing. And I looked at her and I said, well, this is the nick of time because it's not too late. So we were able to change her design, even though it was right at the end, mm -hmm. we still hadn't locked into anything. So we were able to change her design. We were able to get her something that she could use in the water. And now she's been to Myrtle mm -hmm. Beach. She goes to the water parks. She's doing these things. Yep. And I'm glad we had that communication. So that's the big take home is, is make yeah. sure that you mentioned how important getting in the water is yeah. to you. Yep. One of the things... Um, where we want to make sure that people understand you can have an active lifestyle in the water. When I lost my leg, 
one of the main things I wanted to do was water ski again. So I'm in and out of the water all, all of the time. When we uh, do the triathlons that we like to do, or the whole purpose of that with the prosthetics is showing the different components that is to show people that you can get in the, one of the things that we do in the triathlon is you get in the water and swim. And we want people to visually see that. So if you just lost a limb, uh, you may not have this conception, which we unfortunately find most people do, like you were saying, oh, I guess I'm just not allowed to get in the water. Right. So we, again, the triathlon is one of the ways we tried to dispel that. Um, because right. if, if water, if you're a person who likes to be in your water and it's very important to you, uh, the whole point of when you lose a prosthetic limb, um, these are the things that make us feel whole again, getting back to the activities and the things that we like to do. So if you can functionally do it after losing a limb, the idea is to custom design a prosthesis that allows you to do the activities that you love to do. Now, Scott, you mentioned triathlon. So I know that you, in order to train for triathlon swimming, or you have to do lap swimming, right? Yes. Now, now when you lap swim, do you, how do you prefer to do it? Do you use your prosthesis for that or? Well, you're bringing up some, something that is a nice segue into some of the things that you have to consider. Cause people would say, say you just lost your leg. And the first time that you're going to go swimming is you want to get in the pool. If I have an opportunity to go lap swimming and I'm doing it in the pool, a lot of times I will just take my prosthesis off, but you know, you can sit on the ledge, you can safely get in and out of the water. Right. And sometimes with the prosthesis, because I'm kicking my legs so much, um, I may not want that extra movement. So um, it's comfortable, maybe more comfortable for me to swim without the prosthetic limb. Uh, when we're doing a lot of the triathlons, obviously you got to run into the water and get out of the water and get to different staging areas. So depending where I'm at with the training, that's a perfect example where I'm going to train now with my leg on because, but Again, everyone isn't going to necessarily be doing a triathlon. So if you're saying to your prosthetist, I want to swim, well, it's a big difference whether you're going to be swimming in a pool in your backyard or if you're going to be swimming in lakes where you right. would climbing be at a beach. Climbing off a boat or getting... Climbing off a boat, beach, getting in the right. boat, walk, you know, walking from beaches that gradually gets deeper out there. So uh, these are all very important factors. Right. And even for the lap swimming, um, I work with someone who's a bilateral below the knee amputee who does lap swimming now. He likes to wear his prostheses for swimming because without them, he can't touch the bottom. Mm -hmm. And he, so even though, even though the water kind of suspends you, it keeps you more upright. So, yep. so you're, you don't find a problem with standing in balance on one. No, because, and here's, here's what I really love about being in the water. And I like to encourage people to get in the water if that's something they're comfortable doing, because especially if you're in the early stages, the buoyancy in the water is something that really helps. Something that you'll hear us talk about multiple times is the muscle atrophy that we experience um, after we have limb loss. Muscle atrophy can be uh, anywhere between seven and 10% of losing your muscle volume in a week. Um, so one of the big obstacles we're climbing, if you've been three, four, five, six months a year without ambulating on that side, our muscles are very weak. So we're spending our time trying to build the strength up. The first time I was able to stand in a, in a swimming pool and I've I didn't work in the medical field, so I didn't really understand how that worked. But all I noticed was that when I was standing with my prosthesis, I didn't take a lot of effort for me to stand up straight and I could walk in the swimming pool without an assistive device and fire the muscles that I needed to fire because that buoyancy was working like an assistive device. Um, so to answer your question, it's very easy to stand on one leg, but it's also very easy for if you're a new new to wearing a prosthesis, it is a good experience to just kind of get in the swimming pool, a walk around, and uh, water therapy is great for, for new prosthetic users right. for that reason. And, and again, when you hurt your when you hurt your plantar fascia, yeah, a lot of your recovery for that, he was yep. running regularly, yep. doing those things. Um, and that impact, was, I mean, it's, it was an overuse injury. It's something that happens to a lot of runners. You know, um, you have a good prosthetist when he remembers more about your activities than you do. <laughs> but he's like, I'm the guy that's got to fix it. When it <laughs> right. but, but yeah, right. well, when I do injure myself, which unfortunately, just because I'm older, it does happen. Um, water is, I usually go right back to water therapy uh, because it's great for muscle recovery and, and that type of thing. But again, it, it, lowers, still continue, the impact, right? it lowers the impact. So, so when, he, when he was running, obviously running is a high impact activity. He, his, he hurt his plantar fascia and... Well, the thing is, we had our race we was had in July, race. We had our, and this we had happened the early part of June. Right. So you couldn't say, hey, I'm going to lay myself up for two months because that would have been like starting over again. So, right. you know, we started that training cycle in December, I think, I the think previous so. year. Yeah. So, yeah, you can't just kind of 
throw it in the bag for four <laughs> weeks while you're healing. So we were able to continue to maintain the muscle strength and continue to strengthen by training in the water and reducing the impact. Right. Yeah. So we really encourage using your prosthesis in and around the water because it's a lot of fun and it has a lot of benefits. Yes. So if you're thinking about getting back into the water and you haven't done it, um, if check with some of your local therapy places. If they do water therapy, aqua therapy, that would be great. Right. Um, if you could start on the shallow end of a swimming pool, uh, I think you'll find that you can get comfortable relatively quick. Um, but uh, the nice thing about a lake, if you're walking right into the water, is you can control how deep that you're going. Um, but yeah, uh, the call to action here would be, if you wanna get back in the water, the sooner you do it, uh, I think the easier it's gonna be um, to overcome that obstacle. Right, and don't be afraid to reach out with questions, um, a comment on, mm -hmm. on the post, and we'd be happy to hear from you. And you know, talk to your prosthetist again. I mean, Nate, you had mentioned earlier about uh, having a bilateral who likes to have both of the legs on. So there are different feet that articulate that can help you. Again, anytime we do activities uh, with a prosthetic limb, we're learning to adapt to our new normal. So just, um, I would like to note that if it seems a little difficult or isn't doesn't feel like it did before, uh, you're, we're going to find ways to adapt and just keep doing it until uh, you find a, a, a new normal for yourself and you're enjoying your time in the water.